Can't you be quiet? I haven't said a word. You know what I mean, all that moving around. I thought lawyers always said exactly what they mean. Oh. You act like... Like what? All of a sudden, you have a lot of control. It's been an hour already. Isn't someone supposed to tell us what's happened? Yes, we are responsible. <sighs> Lay off a while, John. Try and relax for once in your life. Try and relax. That's terrific, Sal. You act like this is all my fault. Isn't it? This all began with your eggs. Mr. and Mrs. Ross? Yes. I'm Dr. Blake. I've just come from the emergency ward. Is he all right? He's being taken into surgery. We're going to need your signature surgery? on these what? releases. Can I What's see the them, please? He has a peer, what appears to be a fracture of the right arm, internal bleeding, and some difficulty breathing, probably due to a head injury. We're going to know more as soon as we see the x-rays. A head injury? His condition is very serious. The nature of his injuries make it unlikely that he simply fell out of his crib. Well, Doctor, we explained that that's what happened. I know. Are you saying you don't believe us? I'm saying your explanation is unlikely in view of the injuries. of spiritual conflict in the 20th century. Guilt is not a pleasant emotion, but it is part of being human. Each of us is good, but that doesn't mean that everything we do is good. Sometimes we misuse our freedom. We abdicate our dignity. We live a lie, we cop out. We play God, we use other people. When we do, we feel guilt, we should. I'm not talking about neurotic guilt, which is a masochistic form of self-hatred. I'm talking about real guilt, which is a healthy and inevitable consequence of moral failure. Guilt is something we all have in common. It's something we all have to learn to deal with. How? Blame other people? Deny that the guilt is there? Wallow in it? Try to purify ourselves? or face and feel the guilt and open ourselves up so that someone else can put us together again. God is life. He is love. He wants to heal us. Most often he does so through other people. But he can do so only if we open ourselves to him, only if we're willing to feel our need for him. Spiral fracture of the right proximal humerus Subdural hematoma. Question acute rupture of spleeny capsule, among other things. What do you think? I wouldn't put any money on him. He's close to respiratory arrest. Better get him on positive pressure. Somebody really did a job on him. You met his parents? Very briefly. How do they seem? Angry. You can see here the spiral fracture and also the thickening of the radius and the tibia. The skull clearly shows the hematoma. This is Timmy's skull film. You can see the swelling filled with blood. And this is a possible healed fracture on the left side of the skull. Now these represent old fractures about eight months old, healed. And this is the new spiral fracture of the, uh, the right humerus. And you can see the thickening of the bone here and here at the wrist. Abdominal view, distension of the small intestines 
And this is a possible ruptured spleen. The lab tests are suggestive of this as well. And if that's true, it represents a genuine surgical emergency. Timmy was taken into surgery a few minutes ago, and he won't... Well, we won't know anything for about an hour, so if you'd like to sit down. Can I get either of you a cup of coffee? No, thank you. Yes, please. I'd, I'd like some black. All right. Well, what are you mad at me for? You never loved him. You never gave one minute of your precious life to him. You're upset. Yes, I'm upset. I get upset when my two-year-old baby is in surgery. I get upset. Yes, you should. You're never to blame, right? I didn't say that. You never loved him. All right, Sally, I think that's enough. No, I don't think it's enough. I'm really just beginning. All right, would you like to talk about love? Then let us talk about love. Uh -huh. The prosecutor will summarize his case. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a baby, John? John, let's have a baby. Let's have the proof of our love for each other. But that was before the diapers and the two o'clock feedings and the little brat crying all night. You didn't figure for that, did you? You want a baby like a record player that you could turn on and off whenever you chose. Well, that's very impassioned. Bravo. A little brat. That's how you really think of him, isn't it? As Look, a little brat. Sally, I don't think you realize just how serious this actually is that could take Timmy away from us. You wouldn't mind that. We could go to court. Oh. Look, Sally, this is a criminal offense. Yes, well, court, that's the ultimate tragedy for you, isn't it? I mean, whether he lives or dies is nothing but court. Oh, my. All right, now, look, the doctor is going to be back here in about two or three minutes. I would suggest we come to a conclusion as to what we intend to actually tell him. You could tell him anything he'd want. Well, look at her. I think a young lawyer would want his wife to be fashionably dressed. The little mother. Look, John. Here's your coffee. Yes, thank you. This is the first time that Timmy's been to this hospital, right? Uh, yes, it's the first time he's been in any hospital except when he was born. I see. He doesn't believe you, Sally. Well, if he doesn't, he can say so himself. You're both very angry. We're not angry. Yes, we are. Look, I'm here to try and help you. That's my only job. What do you mean, help? He's a psychiatrist. Yes, I am. A psychiatrist? Who thinks we need to talk to a psychiatrist? My two-year-old son is in surgery and someone... Whose idea was this? It's hospital policy. Now we get the fourth degree, right? You have decided that we're beating our child, so you come in here to accuse us, right? I'm not accusing anybody. Well, you said that you didn't believe us. I said your explanation was unlikely, that's all. I don't want to talk to a psychiatrist. You're going to have to, Sally. It's no. hospital policy. No, I don't want to talk to anyone. You're both very angry. No. No, she is angry. I'm not angry. You're not angry. No, he's never angry, John. He's always in control. There are only a few things that get to him, like the way I keep house and the way I look after Timmy and my smoking and the way I dress. One or two things. Why do you dress that way if your husband doesn't approve? Because I dress for me. I like it. And the smoking? The truth is, she doesn't care what I think. She doesn't respect my opinion on anything. Uh, when Timmy was born, everything changed. I became the bank account and Timmy was everything. We see he hates Timmy. He always has. Why do you say that? Oh, I know it doesn't show, but nothing does. I mean, look at John. He's in his armor, his suit, everything. It's, it's all armor. Nothing gets in, but nothing gets out. He's all covered up. No one can say that about you, Sally. How long have you been married? Four years. And two months. And two months. And how many days, John? Yes, well, you can see that she's the perfect wife, and she's the perfect mother, too, in that she has consistently ignored Timmy. 
because she's either playing bridge or talking on the telephone with her friends about the latest fashions, or will we be going for our winter vacation to San Moritz if San Moritz is in vogue? You know season? that's not true. Isn't it? What about the time you took off with two friends for San Francisco? You know, my father said this would happen. Your father? Good. Let's talk about your father. He said you never loved me, and he was right. Her father. What was your father like? He was a strong man and a very good man. Strong? Yes, he knew how to raise children. He was demanding, but he had standards. In what way was he demanding? Uh, he was concerned with principle. There were rules that he expected us to live by. Expected? Mm -hmm. Did he ever ask you how you felt about those rules? We were kids. What do kids know about rules? What were his standards? They were very high. If one of us brought home a report card that said 98, he wanted to know why it wasn't 100. He wanted his children to be the best. Do you see your father often now? No. He died two years ago. Listen, uh, why all this interest in my father? He's dead. He's certainly no part of any of this. Did your father approve of the way you dressed? No. You know, I... I think you may have something there. In that respect, he was very much like John. Uh, nothing satisfied him. He, uh... You heard John about my housework and about the way I take care of Timmy. Yes. Yes, my father was very demanding. Still, she never dressed this way until after he died. She wouldn't do. The reason I ask you is that most people treat their children the way their parents treated them. Yes, yes, and uh, my father was very fair. But demanding. Yes, he was strict and demanding, but he was fair. Are you a demanding parent? I try to be. Demanding? You're not even there. I suppose you are. Someone has to buy the suede coats and the boots and the hot pants. Well, you see, uh, John's at the office six days a week and most of the time on Sundays, but then, well, that's his career. Did your father love you? My father? Yes, did he love you? Of course he loved me. He was my father. Did you love him? She hated his guts. He was a tyrant. Oh, John, he was... He, when I was good, he'd play with me and compliment me and reward me. And when you weren't good? Uh, Doctor, what are you trying to imply? My father loved me, all right? He didn't love anybody. Well, you should know about that. You see, John hates Timmy, and he always has. How do you feel about Timmy? Uh, Doctor, why don't you ask him a few questions? I, I really don't understand why you keep picking at me. I mean, my father and my son, he's not so lily pure, you know. This all began because of his damned eggs. Oh, no, wait. I do happen to like my eggs a certain way. It isn't very complicated, and it isn't hard. I don't like them burned to a crisp, and she knows that. The point of it is, after her father died, she did change. John, I didn't change at all. Sally, you used to be a nice lady. And then Timmy was born, and then your father died, and then you did change. Yes. Yes, I decided to grow up. I had responsibilities. I had a child, and you could not be the center of the universe anymore. And, oh, he hated that. When I first met John, he was interested in me. But uh, now all he cares about is his career, uh, becoming a junior partner. That's, that's all that's worthwhile in his life. Oh, look, when, when we got married, I was in my last year of law school, and I didn't have any money, and she didn't have any either. And then I got a job. And I made $12,000 a year. We never dreamed there was that much money. There was no way to spend $12,000 a year. But she discovered ways. And she's the one who likes the promotions. And she's the one who wants the money. That's a lie. Is it? Yes. Well, I would have left the firm over a year ago. I would have become a poverty lawyer. Except that the pay wasn't enough to meet the needs of my family. John, you never, ever would have left that job. You love that job. It is the only thing that you love. Well, she rewrites history. She does have a tendency to fabricate oh, the truth. Oh, no, 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 John. The truth is right here, here and now, uh, with your eggs. Eggs? Yes. What about Timmy? Right. Yes. Let's use Timmy now. Just, uh, like you always use him. Let's beat me over the head with Timmy. You know, Doctor, uh, whenever we argue, and we argue a lot, 
He uses Timmy against me. He calls him the little brat, and uh, I think that's how he really thinks of him. It's the little brat. How do you feel about Timmy? I love him. I love him so much, but... Look, a parent... A parent has to discipline a child, you know? I mean, a parent has to teach him rules and discipline. Now, John is the father, but he won't do it, and so I have to. Sally, you push him. Oh. You have always pushed him. When he was only six months old, you tried to force him to walk. He couldn't sit up, but no, you tried to force him to walk. Not force him. Teach him. There's a difference. Yes, there is, and you never knew it, neither did your father. John, leave my father out of this. You hated his guts. John he was my father, and I loved him. You didn't cry at his funeral. Oh, right. Yes, yeah, uh... Well, you see, Dr. John is a lawyer, and evidence is very important to John. He needs proof of everything. Well, I don't have to prove that I love my father by crying at his funeral. I didn't cry because it would have upset my mother. How do you mean? Uh, my mother is very sensitive, and she needed me to be strong, and so I didn't cry. Well, it's a normal thing to cry at a funeral. Well, but you see, I was trying to help my mother because that's what my father would have wanted. It must have been very difficult No, for no, no, it wasn't difficult uh, because I knew how to act. My father had trained me. As you trained Timmy? Yes, as I tried to. Listen, I have a lot more respect for my father now that I'm a parent myself. Now, you say you have a lot of respect for your father. Yes, quite a lot, now, yes. how do you feel about yourself? Do you think about yourself as a good person? Of course. Doctor, that's a stupid question. Do you like yourself? Everybody likes themselves. She can't stand herself. I've seen her get up in the morning and go look at herself in the Oh, John, morning. shut up! Listen. Of course I like myself. I'm a good... I mean, there's nothing wrong with me. John thinks there's something wrong with me, but there's nothing wrong with me. I do what I should. I try. I mean, it's not easy to raise a child in this world. You have to watch them every single minute. Now, John says that I don't, but I do. I, I watch Timmy every minute, day and night. I watch him all the time. And, Doctor, that's not always easy because there are times when Timmy doesn't love me that when I think I'm... doesn't he love you? Uh, different times. Excuse me. I'm being paged. Excuse me. Yes. Tell him to come to the emergency ward. I'll see him there in a half an hour. Right. It wasn't uh, Timmy. No, another patient. Uh, uh, do you have many patients, Doctor? I keep busy. Well, since you're so busy, I don't think my wife and I should take any more of your time. Was there something you wanted to talk to me about? Uh, uh, well, yes. Um, I was wondering if I, if I might see Timmy. He's still in surgery. Yes, I know that. You mean you want to see his operation? Yes. That's an unusual request? It's not allowed, but why do you want to see your son's operation? Oh, well, I don't know. I, I, I guess I just don't believe it somehow. How do you mean? It's just that it's so unreal to me. I mean, I was supposed to be in court this morning, and here I am in the hospital. What do you think of me? Is it important what I think? Well, I, I, I think it's a, uh, a fair quest question in a professional sense. What do you think of yourself? Well, uh, do I look like I wear a suit of armor? I hardly know you. Well, how do I seem? You seem angry. And you seem very defensive. I've been wondering why you're so defensive. Well, I'm worried about Sally. Why? Well, because, uh, because of the strain she's under right now. She's not really herself. I mean, all that shouting, that, that isn't really like us. I just wanted you to know it. That's you seem to be very concerned about what I think. No, 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 no. I just wanted you to understand the way things were between Sally and I. How are they? Well, I, I guess I feel responsible for her. Um, you, you know, because she's so upset, and you know women. Yes, women can be different. Yes, and difficult. Over-emotional. Are you emotional? No, I'm not. 
I don't get mad, if that's what you mean. I try to remain calm. You can't think unless you are calm. Think about what? Just think about things, you know, about the way everything uh, fits together. I mean, it's not that I feel responsible for what's happened here. It's just I am worried about Sally because she is so over-emotional. And, and you because care? Of the pressure, right? Do you I, care about well, her? Well, I worry about her. You also worry about me and what I think about you and about her and your relationship. Why is that? I don't know. I'm not a judge. This isn't a trial. Well, it seems like one. I assure you it's not. There isn't any word from surgery. Sally, please. I'm sure he must have told you his version of what happened this morning. No, but I'd like to know what happened this morning. He must have told you. As a matter of fact, he didn't mention this morning. Well, I'd be fascinated to hear what he has to say. Well, you see, he's taking the Fifth Amendment. No self-incrimination. Mrs. Ross, now you were telling me there are times when Timmy doesn't love you. Timmy loves me. All the time? No, not all the time, no. When doesn't he love you? When he does bad things. What sort of bad things? Things that he shouldn't do, things that I've told him a million times that he shouldn't do when he cries. Oh, Sally, come on, he's not even two years old. He's making excuses. He always makes excuses. All right, when he cries, when he does bad things, that means he doesn't love you. Well, if he did, he wouldn't do them, would he? He'd be a good boy. How do you feel when he doesn't love you? I feel, uh... I get mad. Very mad? Yes, very mad. I get so mad, I... No, no, do uh, doctor, please, my wife is upset. I don't think we have to pursue What happened this, this morning? We had a little argument this morning, that's all. It was over something trivial. Uh, the, the, my, my, my eggs, now, I'm not fussy about that, but she... No, it was over the years I've told her how I liked them, and she knows. All right, and then? Well, then I was leaving for work. Dr. Uh, Me followed after me, and he was very upset. But he gets upset whenever... I pushed him back into the living room, and, uh... And then Sally started yelling at me, and uh, I went downstairs, and we live in a second-story apartment, so I went downstairs. And then? Uh, um... When I, when I got to the bottom of the stairs, I, I turned. Tell him. I looked... I looked to the top of the stairs. Tell him. I mean, it was... It was an accident. I, I, uh... I didn't mean to hurt him, but, uh... He... He... he I didn't mean to hurt him. But he went running after John. And he was crying, and, uh, I just, I just wanted to stop him from crying. I mean, I'm his mother, and I have a, I have a duty to discipline him, but, Doctor, I didn't mean to hurt him. I didn't mean, I swear, I swear I didn't, I didn't mean to hurt him. How did Timmy receive the injuries? I pushed him. Down the stairs. Yes. Sally, please. What, um... <laughs> what's going to happen now? That's entirely up to you. All we can do is offer you help. I saw him falling down the stairs. He's so small. He's such a little kid. He hit bottom, he didn't move. 
This has happened before, hasn't it? Yes. It was a few months ago. We went to another hospital. He had a broken wrist <laughs> and a broken leg. Well, when that happened, didn't you think there was any trouble in your family? No. Oh. It was an accident. <laughs> I'm hard on her sometimes. I don't mean to be, but I am. It's really a mess, isn't it? Could be much worse. I can tell you about the counseling program that we've got here at the hospital, but it does require that both of you enter the program. I can also check to see how Timmy's doing. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. I'll be back in a few minutes. Are you all right until then? Yes, I, uh, I think so. serving those outside their church.